In this series, I'll walk you through how to use Cogito to make your game. If you haven't heard of Cogito, it is a free Godot engine project template that enables you to make first person adventures, shooters, and immersive sim type games. Each video that I make will cover one topic, so you can watch them in any order. Though if you're new to Cogito, I recommend you start at the first one. In this video, I'm using some assets made by Loaf BRR, or as I'd like to pronounce it, Loaf Brr. They make great assets for Godot and a lot of them are free, so check them out via the link in the description. They didn't pay me to say this, but I just like their assets and I wanted to give them a shout out. All right, so let's get started. For part one, I want to just talk about scene setup. I recommend you just download the whole project or clone the repository and use this as your starting point. It's usually easier and faster to use the Kogito project and import your own assets than the other way around. Um, mostly because Kogito comes with the plugins pre-configured for you and then you don't have to do it yourself. But in case you do want to do it the other way around, make sure if you go to project settings under plugins, you have input helper and quick audio installed and activated because they're both used and under auto load, make sure you have the following auto loads active. These two are by the plugin, so you, you should find those right away. Um, but this one is for the menus, the menu template manager, and then there's the Kogito scene manager and the Kogito quest manager. All right. If you're not sure if everything is set up correctly, just open the demo scene and play it and see if you run into any issues or errors with it. Um, but if not, you should be just good to go. So this is usually the best way to check if everything works. Let's get started with our own scene. So in this project, I've already imported my assets and I've prepped a level so we can get started right away. I'm gonna just open my level here and I'm gonna call this game Escape from Sector C. It's gonna be a sci-fi game where you have to go through this little maze of rooms and find your way through some obstacles and we're gonna use all the features that Kogito has to offer. Um, in order for me to be able to just play this scene with Kogito, all I need to do is add the player. So I'm just gonna click instantiate child scene and type in Kogito player. There we go. There, That's where it shows up. Press open and now I can see it has been added. And as you can see, it's like in this corner on the floor. I don't want that. So I'm going to just pick it up, turn it around a bit. So it's facing the room and save that. And then let's play and see if that works. There we go. Another thing that's equally as important to set up in your level scene is making sure that the root node of your level has a Kogito scene script attached. Just quickly looking that up. And what this script does is it makes sure that Kogito and its systems know which node is your level. And this is important for when you transition between levels and also, if you drop or spawn items in any way, um, the Kogito Scene Manager saves a reference to your current level scene. And that makes sure that your items will always be children of this node. If you have trouble with spawning items, dropping items, uh, make sure that you have this Kogito Scene script attached to your root node of your level and that should hopefully fix any errors you get. Before I forget, one more thing that I wanted to adjust is our player themselves. Um, I know in my project, I'm not gonna use some of the attributes that we have, so I'm gonna get rid of them and you can simply delete them and the player will keep working as expected. 
Um, so I'm going to get rid of the light meter attribute and the visibility attribute and also of the sanity attribute. Just going to delete all of those, save the player and go back to my scene, give it a go. And there we go. As you can see, the HUD, oops, let me move this up a bit. The HUD at the bottom of the screen has updated to only show the attributes that are left in the player scene. And that's all I need for this game.